You're listening to the Pittsburgh Pile Driver. What the hell is that? Podcast. Well, howdy, y'all. Guess what time it is? It's Thursday night, and I just smacked a lightning bug because I'm that kind of heathen. It is time for the Pittsburgh Pod Driver Podcast. I am your host, Trucker Hat Ransom, and I'm wearing my trucker hat. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and take that trucker hat off, and I'm going to let you guys know that it's time for a podcast. I'm one of your illustrious hosts, Ransom the Madman. You can call me the P3 Champ. Actually, you can call me Ransom Two Belts. If you don't understand what that means, go watch the next episode or the latest episode of Frig Off Ransom, and it'll also be posted here on the Pittsburgh Padre Podcast page. You'll know exactly why I'm called Ransom Two Belts. But enough about me and the glory that is draped over my not-so-manly shoulders. Shut up. Let's get on with this show and introduce the better parts of it. And that is Tiger Bomb Tom, Beef the Legend, and Poot the Bard. These three gentlemen are the three herbs and spices that make this fried chicken podcast fantastic. You coat your your ears in the three herbs and spices that are these guys, and then dip them in the hot oil that is ransom, and we'll come out a golden brown delicious ball of mace. This has gone off the rails. How about we shut the fuck up and do something here? (laughs) We have a lot of picks to do. This is fucking pick months. You can pick your friends, you can pick your nose, sometimes you can even pick your friend's nose, but you can definitely pick who's going to win at some wrestling events and take this belt off of me because Lord knows I'm not going to hold on to it. I don't deserve it, and someone else is going to get it, and boy, I hope it's none of you listeners. I hope it's only one of the three guys that are in the P3 podcast. Let's go ahead and kick some stuff off with picks. I can't even remember what we're picking because pretty much every episode this month it's going to be a pick episode. Well, you know what? We're picking the Great American Bash. That's one of them. Bash. bash. The Great American Bash. The Great American <laughs> Trucker Hand Bash. Listen, before we get into the hashtag Truesweight Open, uh, which uh, everybody should be oh, participating in, should I be. Think we do need to say once more and for all time, all hail the Mad King. Now, now listen, normally I'd say shut up, you did, blah, blah, humbug. But as the Mad King, like Santa Claus, only comes around once a year, I'm going (laughs) to soak in all this I can, because after July, this jolly old grumpy ransom is going to go back up to Krampusville and hang out there. So I'm going to soak it all in now, because it's not going to happen again for the rest of the year. This is your yearly reminder to bend the knee. That being said, like uh, (laughs) the prophetic Mad King has said, uh, this is a picks month. Every episode this month is going to be a picks episode. Picks. Um, which, depending on how you four viewers like uh, picks episodes. <laughs> oh, lo- oh he's lord, dead. he's dead. Uh, the, the firefly came for him. Oh god. Uh, no, it wasn't that stupid ass <laughs> poot. Was straight in his mouth. Oh, stupid poot! I was drinking right then when poot comes in and goes picks, and it just <laughs> shot out my nose. <laughs> <P-X>. Oh. <laughs> So, uh, to roll right into oh, it, no, dead. this week we got the NXT Great American <laughs> Bash, as uh, as the Barbarian oh. had mentioned. We also have AEW Road Rage, yeah. which I believe is taking place in Miami. Now, is, that uh, a w- is that a WWE Dynamite pay- uh, show? Yeah, that is a WWE, WWE Dynamite WWE show, actually. Dynamite. <laughs> Sorry, oh, Jr. Man. Good old Jr. You gotta get, you gotta give the man. I mean, how long did he say it? And he's getting older. Like you know. We, oh, I know. I and know. plus, it always lends to a good yuck. So, it it does. Oh, no. reinforces our point. As WWE, he did that on the sign off after they had this big, blustery, wonderful, oh, like no. five to seven minute promo package thanking the fans and attendance at Daly's place. Oh, recapping no. like the pandemic life that they had at Daly's place. Really, really good stuff. JR is like, thanks everybody for watching WWE Dynamite. And I'm like, oh no, oh, JR. Come on. And you're like, and you're like fucking Matt ja- and you're like fucking Matthew Jackson is gonna shit all over this in <laughs> any minute. Like 
You like you could just feel it. Like you could feel his fingers getting all sweaty. Like <laughs> yes, yes. I'll never know. I'll never know the bastard. Um, also, if oh. he ever like if, if he ever like replies to our statuses about wanting to do a picks episode, like doing picks, I, I'll never see him. So one of you guys will have to clue me in on him. Why did he block? Did you, you block him? I blocked him. I was done with it, man. I'm, oh, I'm, whoa. look at Beef taking a stand. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm just done with negativity, man. Like, it just it negativity breeds negativity. Yeah, man. And like, when you're already a Sith Lord, you don't need to meet more negativity. So I'm, I'm good. On no that. idea it's by that power. rationale. You, have no idea by that rationale how you haven't blocked me from your life. Unlimited <laughs> because power. I have a deep, I have a deep love for you, Ransom, and I, you know, I love you. That's, that's I bleed, why. burp, and poop negativity every single day. What's wrong with you? My ass. Anyway, on this. Oh, okay. So, that's hot. Um, as a tradition. Uh, our champ will lead us off. Pass. Uh, we're going to start with the now, NXT. Hold on. Wait, in the words of Beef. Now, hold on a minute. Uh, can you run down the matches that are I on the card? Because most certainly will. Okay. Uh, so, NXT Great American Bash. We have four Bash. matches. We have a tag team title match between MSK and uh, Champ and Thatcher. We have... Who, who are the current champions there? MSK? Uh, MSK. Yep, MSK. Okay. Uh, we have Not the... bulky car. Damn it. Yeah, right. The, Wait, the, if, the, I the may, MSK. if I may. If I may. M S K. Yep. Thank you. Boots. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, we also have uh, the women's tag team titles, the NXT Women's Tag Team Championships on the line, with the way, uh, which is Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae versus Io Shirai and Zoe Stark. Uh, we have the Million Dollar Championship on the line with uh, <laughs> LA Knight versus Cameron Grimes. Uh, if Cameron Grimes loses, he has to become LA Knight's Butler. <laughs> And uh, finally, we have. Wait, a... is there is there any other caveat? If LA Knight loses, does he have to do? No, anything? he just loses the belt. Yep. Ooh. And then okay. in a singles match, no bells, no whistles, no frills. We're gonna see Kyle O'Reilly versus Adam Cole. So those are your four Ooh. matches at Great American Bash. I thought that they were gonna try and put um, Karrion Cross versus Johnny Gargano in there, but looks like they're saving that for later on the summer. That's cool. Yeah. They... So, uh, we have a total of four matches, which means we you have to rate your matches from one to four. Uh, we will be starting with Ooh. the tag team title match: MSK Ooh. versus who is the, who are the incumbents versus Champa and Thatcher. Ransom, lead us off, my brother. Hey, when uh, did MSK win these belts? Not too long ago, man. Uh, the uh, was, 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 was it uh, stand and deliver? I think. I think so, happen? yeah. yeah. Was that Wrestle WrestleMania weekend NXT? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. Yeah, stand in, yeah, that was stand and deliver WrestleMania weekend, right? Yeah. I believe so. Yeah, yeah. So Yee. that so that would be when because they won the Dusty uh the tag they won the Dusty Tag Classic back earlier, like the very beginning of the year or late twenty yes. twenty, whatever mm -hmm. whenever the whenever that tournament finished up. Uh then there was some faffery between them and the grizzled young vets. Um, and then, then, uh, whatchamacallit, fucking, uh, old Wunny and, uh, Birch there, uh, Birch got actually, like, legit oh. injured. Yeah. And, yeah. Then they, and then that, and then that set up, I uh, think, wasn't it a triple threat? It was. And deliver? It was yeah. Them, yep. uh, GYV and, uh, Legato Del Fantasma at Stand and Deliver Night One. Yep. So, and again, I apologize for the questions, but... I don't normally watch the weeklies due to time and uh, faffery of other things. How long have Champa and other guy been a tag team? Uh, a couple Thatcher. months. Yeah, uh, well, it's it's probably going on about so uh, four months now. Four. I'd five say months. that's that's a couple, a couple few, or are um, we borderline on a few. A few. I think I think <laughs> we're at a few right now. Uh, basically, they they had they had a blow off match I think prior to Stand and Deliver in the Lions Den, um, and. Uh, Coming out of that came a um, respect thing, and they just kind of went from there. Okay, yep. well, I have no idea what's happening. Um, I, I, I don't know. It seems like MSK is a solid, dominant, great tag team, and I don't know why they would take it off of a established team who is good at being champions and put it on two guys who are essentially singles guys who were made into a tag team, and who knows how long that'll last. So I'm going to go with MSK, and I'm going to put a big three on that one. Tiger Bomb, who you got? 
Um. Hmm. That's hard because this is this is a face versus face match. So, mm -hmm. and and I know that they've been I know that they've been kind of building up Champa and Thatcher there for a little while. Building. Um. Yeah. I know, right? Oh, God. All right, so I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with MSK to retain, but I'm gonna put two on it. Oh, what a fancy I, gentleman! The the only thing nagging at me here is uh, the the whole like um um save your die tribe for after everybody picks. I really oh, want to okay. hear it. I want to hear what you have to say, but I don't want any like you or me being <laughs> being swayed. Fluent. Because yeah. he doesn't want influenced by beef. No, okay, because fine. no, because uh, MSK four points. Is that is that well, fair, beef? Well, I'm whatever, man. I listen. I do this all the time. Like whenever I pick, I give you my reasoning, regardless of where where, where I fall in the lineup. If you want to take what I'm saying and take heed of it, or just say that's just beef being blocked. Oh, I thought it was my pick. Whatever. That's why I was. Nope. Oh, it's nope, yours. I'm up there, sir. Oh, okay. Well, then never You're mind. Uh, Beef, uh, I the, want to hear your explanation. Fuck so it's the, not his the, turn. The, 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 the only reason I think... Thank you, Ransom. Um, bend the knee. <laughs> the only reason I think that... Um, bend the dick. Thatcher <laughs> oh. and Chianta might win... Your mouth. Oh, boy. Is the, um, <laughs> the involvement of uh, Imperium. Uh, mm. That whole thing is kind of like holding a cloud over everything and being that Thatcher had previously been... Um, with Imperium and in, in, in different companies, that tells me that they're probably leading that way. But I don't so, know. Hold on, that... wait, 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 wait. Does that mean Imperium is going to interfere on behalf of Thatcher? I, so I don't think anything's going to happen this weekend or next week. I oh. think that that's probably where they're headed for likely SummerSlam. It's just uh... a matter of whether or not that feud garners the belts or not. But I, okay, I gotta got believe it. that MSK is like the young team. Excuse me, they're the new hotness. They're the ones that they're they're the new American Alpha man. Like they're the they're, they're the team to beat in NXT. So I gotta believe that they're holding steady. So I am picking MSK and I'm putting four points on it. Yeah, who, who do you got? Uh, I'm getting weird. I decided this month uh, I'm gonna get weird with things just because yeah, I baby. really like this new system. I am going to go with Thatcher and Champa. Whoa. Four. Oh, oh my, my that's a Ow. ballsy maneuver. I'm getting well, weird hey, with it. I'm getting weird point. with it. Because uh I I just from watching uh NXT, I, I perused through NXT uh before we recorded the podcast. Um I think MSK the, the difference between MSK and Thatcher and Ciampa Steve Dave is that they like MSK they're they are legit young they're young guys they're incredibly talented they came in got those belts you know uh, heavily lauded coming in here as they deserve seriously they do their body of work is is really good however I think it would behoove them they they come in they've defended the belts they've been the kind of underdog you know fight and it was pointed out by Champa in that uh promo that the champions are the underdogs like in in this and you know this isn't like one of those things where I'm like hard and fast and I'm like super buying in and getting do dewy and starry eyed I'm like how great would it be for MSK to lose the belts and then have the money be in the chase like Champa and Thatcher move on they defend you know maybe even get imperium in there as beef said but have msk just constantly be the thorn in their sides just constantly be there and just needle them and push them and push them and push them and you know have to have them really dig deep and prove their grit to earn those belts back i think msk the money is in the chase not the money being like okay these guys came out went straight to the top of the mountain now theoretically unless there's a main roster move there's nowhere for them to go i think if champa and thatcher take those belts Ooh. then it would it would you know kind of do almost 
if I may, a little bit of an AEW thing where it knocks them off the mountain and they got to climb, scrape, and scratch to get back to the top and reclaim what is theirs. That is my thought. And plus, my God, the the crowd is like wildly behind Ciampa and Thatcher. And now to be fair, a lot of that is Ciampa. Nothing to take away from Thatcher. But, you know, the... They like even everything MSK that sounded like the, you know, the triumphant, you know, defending faces, the crowd wasn't buying it. They were just like, okay, cool. But Chompa and Thatcher though, and MSK would say something else, but the crowd goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But, but Chompa and Chompa and Therper, Champa and Berber over here. Like, but like, that's the thing is I'm like, dude. Not that it's one of those things where I go, oh, they can't beat Ciampa and Thatcher. They absolutely Ugh. could. And I think they would make it wildly believable. I think that it would behoove NXT to put the belts on Ciampa and Thatcher and then have MXK chase and chase and chase and chase and then finally win. So that's why I'm getting weird with it. Okay. Hey, I respect it, man. Let's not forget. Let's not forget. Uh, the, getting weird last month whenever Ransom put like a whole fucking ton of points on LA Knight to win, uh, got yep. him to this position. So, uh, yeah, and if there's a month to get weird with it, fuck it, this is the one. All right, moving right along, we have the women's tag team title match, The Way, which again is uh, Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell, <clears throat> defending their tag team championships against Io Shirai and Zoe Stark. Uh, the Shirai Stark team is about three weeks old um basically uh, io shirai made her return after losing the, the women's title for the first time uh in a couple months so saving zoe stark after the way was uh, decimating her so uh this first pick falls on mr tiger bomb tom yep. who do you got uh so this is where i'll get a little weird um I think I think they've been looking to push Zoe Stark now for a while since she's come in. They've had her in some, you know, some good uh good high profile matches with the likes of Io Shirai and fucking um oh my god, uh Tony Storm and her hips. Uh, yeah, I know, right? Uh and I and I think they want to keep I I think they want to keep Io Shirai you know, kind of in kind of in some sort of main event picture, but obviously not putting her back in the women's title uh, chase just yet. So I she am going to go back with... into something else. Right, guys. I love how we just all know sold that. No, but you're not wrong. Um, so I'm no, going to go. No, I'm going to go. No, I'm going to go with no, Io Shirai. No, no, yeah, exactly. No, no. I'm going to go with Io Shirai and uh, Zoe, and I'm going to put three on it. Uh, I am picking the way, uh, with three points. The way. Who? Uh, I'm, I'm going to agree with Tiger Bomb, Tom, but this is my one pointer. Okay, so you're going with EO and Stark as well. Okay. And Ransom, who you got? I, I'm going with the way with two points. Okie dokie. Uh, the million dollar title up for grabs. We have the champion, uh, my goodness, LA Knight my goodness. versus Cameron Grabs. And uh, as mentioned, if Cameron Grabs loses, he has to be the butler for LA Knight. Um, I'm up first on this one. I, as much as I'd love to see a Cameron Grabs Virgil angle, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, I think it's Cameron Grabs time to take it. Um, and, uh, I don't know. I, 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 I just feel like it's Grimes time, baby, to the moon. Uh, but I am not confident on it, so I'm going to put one point on Cameron Grimes. Poot. Um, I agree with you. I think this is a correction. No offense to LA Knight, um, but I feel like this is a, uh, a, a, a retcon. I do. I feel like they're like, oh, shit, we should have had Cameron Grimes win. And they're correcting it now. Um, I think there's plenty of other things for LA Knight to do. I feel like he has a... Not not that Cameron Grimes doesn't. But I feel like this is going to be a long-term thing for Cameron Grimes. Um, 
I, I think that this is something that he can do well. I think it's something that could even travel with him up to the main roster. Um, so I, I feel like this is an absolute retcon. This is an absolute redo. And I agree with Beef. I think it's Grimes time, and I'm going to put my two on it. All right. Uh, Ransom. I 100% completely and utterly disagree with Poot. I think this is comedy gold. I think this stuff writes itself. Come on. Cameron Grimes as the butler for LA Knight after everything that Grimes has done with the whole money angle and him being rich. Now he's a butler. Good Lord. Come on. Now, don't get me wrong. Cameron Grimes, at some point, I do believe, will beat LA Knight and get his hands on that million dollar title and be the million dollar champion. Like, I believe it's going to happen. But I think that they've got at least uh, a pay per view length in between of Cameron Grimes being LA Knight's butler on the weekly. That, Cameron Grimes is very good in the ring, he's very good on the mic. But he's one of those guys where, like, I don't, he's not, I don't want to classify him as a comedy wrestler because he's, uh, oh, pardon me. Um, he's leagues above Santino Morella. Santino oh, yeah. Morella was a comedy wrestler. But Cameron Grimes has that comedic, comedic way about him that he can be a legit wrestler, but also at the same time, just as equally good as a comedian. And there's a firefly on my glasses. Holy mother. God! Told you they're coming for you. They got them. Oh, they're everywhere. They got them. Monsters. Uh, oh, okay. All right. Compose yourself. <laughs> but no, I, I, I think this is, I think this is comedy gold, and I think this is just pure unadulterated entertainment. Um, to have Cameron Grimes be, be the butler. Um, and like I said, it might not last long. Maybe a pay per view length in between, and then they'll, they'll kill that angle and give him a legit run. But I'm banking again on these two to be my bread and butter. So I'm going to call LA Knight for four points. Ah. Wow. All right. Cool deal. Uh, Tom, who you got? Uh, basically, Ransom just stole everything that I was going to say in my thinking oh, process in this. No, no, that's fine. At least I'm not the only one. <laughs> I, I was just thinking that, too. I'm like, how great would it be? Because the fact of like, if they were going to put it on, if they were wavering between between Grimes and LA Knight, who they really wanted to put it on, the safer bet would have been to put it on Grimes just because he's a little bit more established than LA Knight. You know what I mean? So to me, I don't see it as a uh, as a redo or a correction. I see it as they had this set up. They, you know, they knew what they were going to do with LA Knight and him. You know, there there had to be some sort of end to Ted DiBiase being there, and that was it. Like, you know, LA Knight wins and he, you know, uh yeah, beats the shit out of Ted DiBiase or whatever. And um so that's so that's my thinking. I'm with Ransom on this. This is comedy gold. I can't wait to see Cameron Grimes as a butler. It's gonna be so great. Uh, I'm also putting my four points on LA Knight for this match. So yeah, baby. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, here's, here's the re thing. Really, really quick, yeah, beef. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is actually um, kind of uh, uh, kind of news, um, and, and we're not going to do the fast count news thing because this is actually kind of somber. Um, via our our buddies uh, in Dos Hermanos Lucha, um, I just saw a post on their their Facebook. Um, it's, uh, been announced that, uh, Del Wilkes, the Patriot has passed away. Oh, um, yeah. And, um, so just, you know, not, it, and I'm not trying to kill the mood or kill the buzz here, but I saw this and I figured it, it deserved a mention because, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I had very fond memories of the Patriot. It, it and, and honestly, just for me, it was encapsulated in the WWE thing, but, um, he, um, you know, yeah, he uh, he passed away. So, uh, if if I can speak for everyone here for P three, our thoughts and and prayers are going out to uh, the friends and family of Del Wilkes. So, yeah, and, yeah, and rest in peace because he was he was an innovator, man. With that mask, like people yeah. in Mexico were doing that all over the place, but in the U S. Um, you well, know, he did it in but, Japan too. Like it was yeah, yeah. very very rarely did you see somebody under the hood, like for a good amount of time 
Del Wilkes did this for his entire career as yeah. a Patriot in WWE and elsewhere, as you mentioned. So yeah, uh, rest in peace for a true innovator uh, in, in a lot of ways, man. That's that's a bummer. Yeah. Um, before we close out the LA Knight Cameron Grimes discussion, I just want to say I think because uh, um, Tom, you mentioned about Cameron Grimes being kind of like the guy. I don't see it that way. And, and I love Cameron Grimes, but whenever I look at NXT and I look at people who are absolutely ready to go onto the main roster, I see three. And and I could be, you know, there, there could be arguments presented to me for others, but I see Karrion and Cross, absolutely 100% main roster ready. I see Adam Cole, 100% main roster ready. And I see LA Knight. LA Knight is the complete package. He can talk. The dude reminds me of The Rock on the mic, and that is saying something. Not only that, that's high praise, big statement, but high praise. Not only that, but he's on he's in those um, Car Shield commercials with 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 uh, opposite Ric Flair. Oh, he is. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which is he's he, he's he's like the bad guy that's like I'm gonna come and damage your car and give you high oh, bills. Ha ha ha! And Ric Flair oh, comes that's out. That's right. That was him. him. Was I thought? You know, when I first saw that, I was wondering if that was LA Knight or yep. if it was just somebody that looked a hell of a lot like him. Yep, and that that tells me that he is going to be noticed. And like I said, man, like. They could drop him on SmackDown tomorrow night and be like, here you go. Here's your new uh, Intercontinental Champion. And, and, and it'd be 100% believable. Um, we'll, we'll see. I actually see it going the opposite way, honestly. I think that at some I, I think I think Cameron Grimes gets a belt back from him next week. And then at SummerSlam, they have their blow or the SummerSlam and uh, fall or the, the SummerSlam NXT event. They have their blow off. And I think that LA Knight has to become Cameron Grimes' butler. As a result of this stipulation, so uh, that I think would be a higher level of polarity, just see, in my I, opinion. I I just don't see like as far as as far as one being funnier than the other. I feel Cameron Grimes being the butler to L.A. Knight would be a lot more uh, just a lot funnier because, ju- like Ransom said, just because of how Cameron Grimes has that comedic presence as oh, well. Oh, he's like, got the timing, hundred percent. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I mean no. No, no denying anything that you've said about LA Knight. He's awesome, and uh, and and I love hearing him on. I I love hearing his mic work and stuff. Um, but I just I don't see him being as funny in that particular position or that role as like I have to be so and so's butler as it would be compared to Cameron Grimes being in that position is all. But no, that's fair. Uh, in, in, interesting discussion about this match. Uh, we'll we'll see we'll see how it holds up. Yeah. Finally, uh, they perceived the main event. They have they haven't announced the main event, but I mean, come on, it's it's it's, it's the, the main, main event. event. How uh, is this not going to be the main event? Exactly. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly versus Adam Cole in a straight up wrestling match. The build up to this because this is next week, like next Wednesday on NXT, yeah. right? So yep. Yep. yeah. So I mean, there's there's no uh, there's nothing else that you know is going to go on in the meantime. That's you know, yeah. Um, I, you know, I. I the, the build up to this has been that yeah, Kyle O'Reilly really won their first match, which was like a street fight, like on Sanction Lights Out match. Um, Adam Cole was saying, "Hey, I'm the better wrestler, and that's why we're gonna have a wrestling match. So that you have nowhere to hide." Um, interestingly enough, Samoa Joe has been more involved in this angle than pretty much any of the others on the card. He's had a couple run-ins with Karrion Cross, but with this one, he's actually put hands on Adam Cole. He actually knocked him out the one time. And then this week, uh, he watched as Kyle O'Reilly put Adam Cole in um, the heel hook. And uh, like Adam Cole's like, look at him going, Joe, why aren't you doing anything? Come on, Joe. And Joe just kind of smirked and walked out while the security came and broke him up. Mm. So uh, that that is kind of a a, a, a cloud over, you know, what, what's Samoa Joe going to do, if anything. But uh, we have Kyle O'Reilly versus Adam Cole. Poot the Bard, baby. You would be up to pick first here. Who you got? Oh, man. Um, this I, is definitely the toughest of the four. It really is. And I'm uh, that's that's why I'm, you know, I'm kind of glad my, well, I guess it's just my three. Um, you that's know. What she said? I guess. I don't. Wait. This, I like I how there was some, yeah, like, apprehension on Tom's part. He's like, that's, I guess. Um, is it? Is, did she say? That? I don't. Know. Um, I I was I I'm really torn on this. 
um they're so these two have such good chemistry and that you know you know they're such good friends because they can go out there and say the shit they say to each other um uh, you know i i really my mind went one of two ways it was either that o'reilly's gonna win this one and uh o'reilly's gonna win this one and then cole's gonna go to the main roster um mm -hmm. or uh cole wins this one and then they finally kick him past kyle o'reilly and move him on to bigger and better things yet again um it's it's a tough call um but like i said i'm getting weird with it i'm gonna put my three points on adam cole ransom so i don't want to go on a diatribe but this 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 is my line of thinking and i i like poot and very torn on this one because as we know wwe loves their best out of three feud matches you know, o'reilly wins the first one cole wins this one they have a final one which is the final blow off and all be all to the feud match and then whoever wins that one is the ultimate victor so <clears throat> oh pardon me oh my gosh <clears throat> oh something's happening um so part of me thinks that it's going to be adam cole because then they'll go on to a final feud ending match whatever it's going to be at the nxt SummerSlam event part of me thinks that adam cole will win this one they'll do a third one something will happen whatever adam cole moves on to compete in nxt against samoa joe like that will be when samoa joe comes back as an in-ring competitor against adam cole but and this is where I'm going to get in trouble because I'm going to not be thinking with my head. I'm going to be thinking with the fantasy booking side of me and wanting to see this happen is I want Adam Cole to lose this match and then have at Money in the Bank a mystery opponent or a TBA for the men's Money in the Bank and have that be the main roster debuting Adam Cole. <clears throat> what a better... <coughs> Oh, bug in the mouth. What a better way to shine Adam Cole on the main roster than to put him immediately in the Money in the Bank match. Good Lord, Adam Cole in a Money in the Bank ladder match? Holy shit. So I don't know what to do here, honestly. And I wanted to kind of strategize a little bit and make sure that this was my one-pointer because I honestly have no freaking idea what's going to happen with this. As much as I want to see... Kyla Riley beat Adam Cole, and then Adam Cole go on to then compete in Money in the Bank. I feel like that's my fantasy booking, and that's not what's going to happen. I feel like the most logical thing is it's going to be a best two out of three feud ender. So I think Cole's going to win this one, and then at the NXT SummerSlam, Cole and O'Reilly will then go on to have their last blow-off match. So I'm going to pick Adam Cole. Um, uh, when is Money in the Bank again? Money in the Bank is later on this month. Um, let me get the date for it here. Okay, okay but, it, but, it's, but it's before SummerSlam. So, okay. Oh my goodness, yes. Okay, so... July 18th. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we don't have... Uh, SummerSlam is going to be in August, correct? Yep. Okay. We don't have too long to wait between a third blow off match between uh, O'Reilly and Cole, if that's what's going to be the case. So uh, I'm I'm also again, Ransom and I are thinking a lot alike tonight and uh, and I'm slowly morphing into his doppelganger as it yes. as it goes with wrestling, as it goes with Starbucks drinks and yes. and uh, yeah, and other things in life. So uh, happy. I know, right? <laughs> ransom symbiote is spreading. <laughs> the the ransom syndrome. The truck um, ransom symbiote is spreading. It is, um, but the good symbiote, like in Venom, not not in fucking Spider Man Three. No, so, yeah. no, we don't want to talk about that. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. 
No, um, we don't want to talk about it. But um, no, I, I, I think that it's going to be a best of three. I think Cole wins this one. I know I only have my one point on this one, and that's th- this one really was like the biggest toss up for me. Um, so that's why I wanted to save my one point for it. But I, I think I think they have a blow off match at the whatever SummerSlam NXT is going to be. And then we'll see what happens from there as far as what they do with Cole. If if Joe gets involved into a program with him or whatever. Um, but we won't have to wait too long for the blow off match, which is good. So there you go. Cole, one point. Take it away. You, you sir, are no ransom, but I love you just the way you are, Tom. Wow. Wow. Um, Wow. Uh, I said a doppelganger, not well, not you not know. a bad thing. I, I told you I love you how you are. Take the compliment, damn it. <laughs> you, the sound, you, uh, sound, anyway. you sound like you sound like <laughs> you sound like me talking to my girlfriend. I'm like, shut up and take my goddamn I said, compliments. I said before t- bend the D. Uh, uh, I heard you the first time, dickhead. Anyway, dickhead. um I'm gonna be the lone dissenter here. Uh oh. I'm picking I, I'm picking Adam Cole. And I'm pick, putting my one. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm putting my two pointer on it because of fifty fifty booking. Because that's that's WWE. If they did a fucking musical, this would be like their uh, their, <coughs> their big number going into fucking intermission. Fifty <laughs> fifty booking is how we fuck everything up. But about um, it's gonna you know, be a fight tonight. <laughs> Adam Cole gets his heel hooked tonight. I, I just like I like nobody wins, baby. Like this is this is the ultimate dusty finish of fucking fifty fifty booking. Nobody wins. Um, but I don't so think they you, have. How is this the dissenting opinion? I thought we were all picking Adam Cole. I'm yeah. getting there. I'm getting. Oh, there. sorry, sorry. My okay. bad. I apologize. My dissenting opinion is that I don't think there's going to be a blow off match. I think this is it for those two. Oh. Um, I I I really think we get Cole versus Joe at SummerSlam. Maybe Cole versus, or like, you know, the SummerSlam NXT. Maybe Cole versus Cross, uh, depending. I, I think I think a lot of balls are in the air with what's going on with Samoa Joe and his health. Uh, so if he can get medically cleared before the NXT SummerSlam, I think we'll see Cole versus Joe then. And Ooh. then the winner of that going on to face Cross, probably leading up to the Survivor Series NXT event. But all that being said, I am... Also picking Adam Cole like the two points because that's what I got left. Um, but I, 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 I do feel very strongly that he will win this match because it is a wrestling match. And plus, Kyle O'Reilly has been uh, held high the last couple of weeks. So moving right along, we also have the AEW Road Ranger, their first show outside of Daly's Place in over a year. Um, very exciting times. I am happy to report, by the way... That when they come to Pittsburgh in August, your boy, Beef the Legend, will be representing the P3 at both Dynamite and, um, oh god, what's it called? Rampage. Thunderdome. Rampage, Thunderdome. Beef. Way Rampage. to fuck it up already. Know, Fucking right? embarrassing. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited to, to be there. But, what um, I nonetheless, again, guys? this is, what? uh, what, the hell so what, what am I? What am I getting tickets for again? Yeah. <laughs> what event? Yeah. I, just, I just forgot the name because there's a fucking Super wrestling Bowl Saturday. There's, Super there's Bowl a, Saturday. A wrestling show on every night of the week now, and it's tough to keep the name straight. Your yeah, seats are too yeah, tight, no, Billy. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. Um, where, so where is uh, where Peter's is Road Ranger at? Uh, Road oh, Ranger's okay. in Miami. Oh, never mind. Yeah, Road Ro- Ranger's okay. in Miami. Yeah. So, when they come uh, to Pittsburgh, they'll um, be at the peak. Correct, correct. Yeah. So um, we have five matches here. I'm going to outline them here, spit on my laptop a little bit. Um, we have Andrade's debut versus Matt Seidel, uh, the uh, former Ev- Evan Bourne. Uh, so Matt, Matt Seidel. Um, we have Orange Cassidy and Chris Statlander versus Blade and the Bunny. We have um, Proud and Powerful and Jake Hager versus FTR and Wardlow. We have Cody versus QT Marshall in a South Beach strap match. Oh and we have who? young... Excuse me. Say that again. What, who's in the South Beach strap on match? Cody versus QT Marshall. Okay. And then we have uh, the young... Young Bucks defending a tag team titles against Penta El Zero Miedo and uh, Eddie Kingston. Got it. Those are your matches. So we have five points up for grabs. Uh, well, actually, more than that. But we have <laughs> five ratings on this one. 
So uh, we will keep on a ro- keep on rock and roll and ransom. We'll start with you, uh, Cody versus QT Marshall in the South Beach Strap Match. Um, you know, God knows what a South Beach Strap Match is, but I gotta believe it's probably just like every other Strap Match in the books. Um, I don't know if this is going to be contested like a Four Corners match, but I gotta believe that if it's not denoted as a Four Corners match, it's probably just going to be like a you know, hey, they're joined at the wrist, and whoever wins I'm, wins. I'm gonna go with this since the last time we had this discussion about whether what the strap match and a Four Corners. The last time they had a strap match, it was just a regular strap. Uh, yep. it, it was a regular strap, and I believe that was Cody versus um, fucking. Brody, thank you. Yeah, Brody Lee. That was uh, a dog collar match. I think okay, the last either, strap match was. Uh, I don't know, either that way, was, uh, it was something. Or yeah, other, I don't know. but 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 my point being, it, it was not a a four corners match. So right. I believe if something's ever going to be a four corners match, they'll denote it as that. So I would safely assume it's just a regular strap match. Right, meaning meaning they're linked at the arm by a strap, and it's a regular wrestling match. Otherwise, plus strap. So no like that. The safe word is meatloaf. It means I'll do anything for love, but I won't do that. Oh. It, it, it's um so knowing all that, ransom, Cody versus QT Marshall in this strap match, who you got? Uh so shitty question. <laughs> Remind me again who QT Marshall is. <laughs> He's the guy that was part of the uh the nightmare family and then broke out and took all of the uh the the group the recruits from the nightmare factory with him so um oh well, he was the guy that was in the corner of a go go a yep, go go right stupid freaking cody won that match yep. yep lord almighty qt marsh was kind of like the the leader of i don't know what what, what, what they're called but yeah the factory the factory yep the dick so, nuts this one's this one <sighs> Maybe I'm thinking too far into this because Lord knows anytime we pick a Cody match, if you ever pick against Cody, he winds up winning. I don't know if they keep him on the Triple H train and he just continues to win for reasons or if finally something will make sense and someone will beat Cody. I have no idea with this one. Really, I don't. Um... Oh. oh, balls deep. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I- I'm probably going to say Cody, and my confidence is so low on this just because I don't know if he continues down the Triple H train or not. I'm going to put a one on it. I have no idea. Tom? Uh, I'm going to say Cody with a three. Uh, I think that somebody will come along and be Cody, but I don't think that QT Marshall is that guy, um, which means that it's probably definitely going to be QT Marshall. Um, I, I just like QT Marshall is a nice hand to have. He's, he, he's, he, he's a good like C plus player, but I just don't understand this feud. I don't understand. I don't understand Cody anymore. Uh, he's he's rarely around. Now, given he is a, a recent father, so uh, there is that. And he's, like, you know, doing photo shoots and everything. He's, like, he, he's getting the AEW name out there, so good on him. Uh, but this feud has basically been carried by the factory and, like, Dustin. Um, so all that being said, I believe that I am going to take Cody on this one as well and uh, i am going to take a three pointer on that uh as well just as like tom did because i just i mean i don't know like you, you just don't pick against cody if, if if you pick against cody it just generally doesn't happen uh pootski lol cody wins one okay <laughs> and, 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 and i really think it's a uh a, 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 a disservice to the brand to have this to keep happening where Cody wins and you know n- no one increases their station in the company but like I said I-, I just like I can't envision QT Marshall being the guy that they're like alright Cody's gonna lose a big high profile match for the first time in over a year 
let's make it be QT Marshall. I, I just... Right. Nothing about QT Marshall screams talent to me, screams like a good guy. Like, he's he's friends with Cody. Uh, and, and, and much like Ransom had said, Cody kind of going down a Triple H hole, like, of course, Cody's buddies get you know, a, a ride with them. You know, just like just like fucking Brutus Beefcake rode Hogan's coattails all those years. That's what you do in wrestling. You bring your friends along with you. So I, I get it. But I just like I, I I wish one of the other EVPs would step in and say, Hey man, like why Q T Marshall? You know? Yeah, I agree with you there. I'm I it's I pro- I probably should have put less points on it. I probably should have did what Poot did just there. Lol Cody wins one point. Just have it done and over with, but we'll we'll see. Um I I know what Ransom put in the Discord, but he would be last to pick on this next one anyways, right? Cuz I'd be up first. So he would, but I don't know if it'll be fair because he may want to hear points and things. Okay, gotcha. Um, fair enough. Fair so, enough. So um all all that being said, uh, I, 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 I do want to talk about um, how exciting it is that AEW is getting out and about again. Um, I, I really hope that NXT follows suit at some point. Uh, not that I don't love the CWC. It's a cool little venue. I like that they're packing as many fans in there as they can. But um, I, I think I think AEW getting out and about is a big deal, and uh, more, more importantly, I think that AEW being back on Wednesdays will be a big deal. Uh, and I don't know if you guys saw on Dynamite or not, um, but they are um, going. They, they they've already started sowing the seeds for Hangman versus Kenny. Oh yeah. Uh, so I Good. I I do believe that that's going to be our all out matchup. I'm I like when. When I saw the Dark Order come out during Kenny's promo on Dynamite, I was like, fuck, don't don't rush this. Don't put it on fucking like Fighter Fest or some shit. Because we know for the most part, now I mean, you know, title changes do happen, surprisingly. Look at Bronson Reed, we'll talk about that later. Oh. Um but like fuck it, we uh, can talk about it now while we got time. Well, I we're I'm, on, I'm, a, I'm we're I'm on trying... an AEW roll. All right, yeah, all right. Um, fair I'm, enough, fair enough. I'm tr- I'm trying not to go too far from the picks and from AEW. I'm trying to stick in that general wheelhouse. Okay. Um, but I mean, for the most part, especially with AEW, AEW has been very careful. They've played things very close to the vest. Generally, the surprise changes don't happen. So uh, I, I I'm I'm hoping that they really draw this out over the summer. And that we do eventually see Hangman versus Kenny at all out, and I think at that point Kenny will lose that belt. Um, but I, I'm I'm happy to see that 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 the, that the seeds are being sown for it already. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. We got it. We got it. We got a road to go to get there, though. Um, a Cody uh, road. For, for those, for, yeah, Cody road. For those of you that are listening, this is what is known in the business as <laughs> vamping, where we are punching it up on the see, fly. I, I'm I'm giving yes. I'm gonna give you a fun tip, and this is something that 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 we do with the band. Whenever you're vamping or whenever something's kind of going asunder, you never call it out. You never call it out. You just roll with it. You never call it. Well, out. I just wanted I just wanted the the, the audience no, to know no, 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 no. why we're not continuing to see because ransom's uh, pooping. Wow. There you go. Well, laid it out there. There's, is that is there, that, confir- is that uh, confirmed? <laughs> I mean, hashtag. Well, I mean, you know, nothing. Nothing's confirmed. Uh, I dynamite did a lot of good this week. You guys catch dynamite at all? I'll tell you what. Uh, the, I I caught parts of it. I really want to go back and with more attention watch the Sammy Guevara um, uh, MJF, MJF match. match because. Jesus tap dancing Christ those two like that's what youth and talent can do like it got I, real fucky at the end like someone uh, yeah. said oh hey WWE booking showed up and you know, well yeah. I- ironically WWE booker was at the show uh, well, b- booking backstage but well, and that's fair and I mean but but AEW doesn't 
just have that be the hook that they hang their hat on. You know what I mean? They they use it and it happens. And that's a problem is that that's now a tool that people can't use. We are gassy tonight. That, that's the, the, the it, it's now a finish or a tool that has been tainted because WWE overused it when they didn't have enough creativity to do something else. And because of that, it's the same thing whenever you, you know, you hear people use the term X-Pac heat or as I like to call it now, go away heat. You know what I mean? Like uh -huh. it, it's just it has a stigma to it. So whenever it happens, even if it might be appropriate, even if it could be something that could be used very creatively. That's just not how it is anymore. That's just right. not how it is because WWE well, has spoiled it. So that's the reason yep. is that it's a lot of very trigger happy when something like that happens. People immediately yell and scream and say that's WWE booking. No, it's not WWE booking. It's just that you are conditioned to hate it because WWE overuses it. Uh, by the way, guys, by the way, hashtag Illuminati bathroom confirmed. <laughs> Um, I knew it. Um, Lizard people in there. How... Call a plumber. Yeah, man, they were coming off the pipes. <laughs> oh my. Oh. Or out my butt, depending on how you look at it. Okay. That's that's that's, that's, that's how a lot of uh, nitros and raws ended back in the day. Was like you know the big. What, with lizard big people coming out of ransom's butt? Yes. Birth no, like the, 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 the big like bench clearing brawls, and everyone was like, "Oh, we'll see you next week on WWE Dynamite." Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> oh no. Uh, anyway, okay, are. so, uh, reeling it back in here, uh, apologies, on, apologies the vampire, you're, good. Apologize. you're good, all good, all good, all good, oh, all right, so, we will lead now with Tiger Bomb on this one, uh, pretty straightforward, Andrade versus Matt Seidel, well, who you got, Tom? Uh, I am gonna go with Andrade, um, what's that? I said, do we even need to pick this one? Yeah, do we really? Uh, I'm going to go with Andrade, and I'm going to put uh, one point on it. What the fuck? Did you, did you seriously say one point? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I, you know, you know, I, I am in, in of the same vein as Ransom. Like, do we need to pick this? But here's the thing. If you're looking to really kind of start a feud with this guy... And and I mean, what what better way to a hot shot Matt Sidell than giving him like a surprise victory here, and also give Andrade something to kind of like wet his foot with the uh, with AEW waters here. Uh, I mean, it's it's not inconceivable. I just man, like especially with what you heard about what he he wanted in his contract as far as creative control goes. I don't think there's a chance in hell Andrade loses this match. So I'm picking Andrade with a five pointer. I didn't Who? even hear I didn't even hear anything about his creative control stuff, but you can tell me that after we get done with the picks for this. Well then. long long story short, basically he, he, he said that he wanted full creative control over his character in AEW bef before he signed. Um uh, okay. I, I don't think that's what the final contract read. But like that was the word is like that's what he wanted was full like Hulk Hogan style creative control over the character. Oh, good including, lord! Including wins and losses. Uh, I I I I guess whenever you're the biggest free agent in wrestling, and I guess whenever you're married to Char, going to be married to Charlotte Flair, I guess you can command that kind of shit. Um, but yeah, that that's kind of what we're dealing with. Poot, who you got? Um, yeah, it's it's absolutely going to be Andrade, and I'm going to put. Four on this one. Mm. Ransom. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, it's an Andrade and it's a five pointer for me because if the rumors are to be believed and he wanted creative control, I have to imagine that A, AEW, especially with all the previous WCW people that they have there or and people that knew the business during the WCW era, you know, like Cody being the son of Dusty Rhodes, who was involved in WCW and, you know, all that bullshit. I can't imagine, regardless of how big of a free agent Andrade was, I can't imagine that they would give him complete creative control. So, in order to get him, I, there's no way that they're going to say, no, you can't have creative control, and by the way, 
on your first match, you're going to lose to uh, friggin' Evan fucking Bourne. Just not a chance. So he's, he's winning this match, hands down. If he loses it, I'll be jaw-dropped shocked. Well, like I said, I, you know, this, this really steams and, and, and stinks of, like, you know, the whole, like, you know, fucking, like, roll-up or, like, uh, um, small package or some shit, or Vicky Guerrero does something that distracts Andrade, and Matt Seidel catches him with his pants down. Um, I, I just, like, I... I worry, especially with Andrade, because I'll be real. Like, I, I'm an Andrade guy. I like Andrade. I think he's a top-of-the-card talent. But I don't think he's a guy that has the clout of, you know, like a, like a fucking Brock Lesnar, for example, that no. can come in, lose a match, and still look strong. No. On his no. First match. I, I, think, I think that there are guys that you can do that with. Yes. I don't think Andrade is one of them. So I, I yeah, 100% now, I think he's going to steamroll. If they had him in a match with somebody that was a much bigger name than Matt Seidel, then I'd be, I'd be more apt to believe it. But this match screams to me, oh, whoa, bless you. Oh, God bless you. This match screams to me of a match where... It wasn't on the recording, but I sneezed. <laughs> it's a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, dude. Oh, so derailed. Oh, uh, that was so funny. Um, oh, shit. What the hell was I saying? Oh, uh, this match screams to me of a good, uh, a good spectacle wrestling match, but the end of it, I feel like it's going to be a very anticlimactic end. It's not going to be one of those matches where you have like, oh, uh, oh, is this it? Oh, no, no. Okay, he kicked out. Oh, is this going to be? Oh, no, he kicked out. I don't think it's going to be that way. I think it's going to be very entertaining in the ring. There's going to be some decent back and forth, but come the end, you're going to go, oh, okay, that, that makes sense. Saw that coming. Fair enough. Right along, we have uh, Orange Cassidy and Chris Statlander versus Blade and the Bunny. Um, kind of continuing this feud that they've been kind of mired in um, with, uh, with uh, old Trenty Locks on the, uh, the IR right now. Uh, obviously, the uh, the best friends are. are uh, what happened? Uh, what happened to Trent? Uh, I think he had surgery, neck, shoulder, something of that nature. But he's he's going to be out for a Wait. good amount of time. Oh so, damn it, my boy so, Trent! Now hold on, didn't didn't Chuck Taylor just get back from injury or surgery sure not long ago? Yeah, God sure damn it! Yeah, well, keep in mind, Chuck mm-hmm. Taylor and Trent Beretta have been at this for probably a decade and a half or more. Oh no, no, I I get it. It's just it's just shitty timing just because you know Yeah, because you know, Chuck Chuck Taylor comes back um whenever they whenever they finish having oh god, who the hell they have I think they had that blow off with um fucking Pride uh Pride and Powerful, didn't they? Yep, I believe so. Yep, the the parking lot brawl. Yep. Yeah, the big parking lot brawl. He came back from that. Then they had the whole thing with um then they had the whole arcade uh with whatever Miro. it was yeah with Miro yeah with Xavier. Miro god damn yeah, that just it, it, it but, just sucks that's all you know that's why it makes sense to have stables like yeah. the best friends plus orange cassidy and now chris statlander because when one goes down you still have something to lean on um so that being said uh like i said it's uh, orange and chris statlander versus bunny and the blade or sorry blade and the bunny uh, I am just going with my gut here. Uh, I don't see any reason to uh, derail Orange Cassidy from the role he's been on, so I think that Orange, Cass- Orange Cassidy and Chris Statlander are going to win. I'm not 100% confident, so I'm going to put two points on it. Poot, who you got? Uh, I have the same thought as you. There's no reason to derail Orange Cassidy. Uh, I love the Blade and uh, Bonnie. Um, um... And and butcher like I love that team. I think they're great. They're they're fun, and you should absolutely listen to the episode of Talk Is Jericho with them. It's really interesting. Um, but I'm gonna give uh, Orange and Statlander. I'm gonna give this the old Doosan. Ransom. Uh, yeah, Actually, I'm I gonna give it three, 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 three. Okay, you know to. Well. Good to know that uh, 4th of July weekend is approaching as fireworks have begun to be ignited in Mordor. 
It's the season, man. Listen, I Fuck I know from town. being over there, like when the month reads July, whether it's July first, third, fourth, or twenty fifth, yep, there's a good chance you're gonna see a fucking firework in Mordor. Yep. At least one, if not seven. Yep. <laughs> Hot bullshit. Um, but in any case, tolerance. Uh, to- no. <laughs> oh. So, oh, here it comes. There it was. I heard it. Yep, I heard it. Fucking like hell, fart. man. You people and your idiot fireworks. I hope you blow yourselves up. Um, I'm going to go <laughs> no, with... You, no, uh, you don't, because then you'll have to go out on the call. Yeah. Sure won't. No way, Jose. It's podcast night. I don't give a shit who blows themselves up. I'm podcasting. <laughs> I'm not firefighting tonight. No, no, no. They're not paying me forty nine ninety nine. It ain't happening. Um, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm going to go with uh, Orange Cassidy and Lady Friend uh, for a big two-pointer. Quote, the reasons of Putin beef. I I think I'll follow suit and also two points. All right. Yeah, seems seems uh, pretty, pretty cut and dry there. But, you know, this is one of those things where it's kind of an in-between time. So you never know what's going to happen. True. You said two on that, right? Yeah, two. Two for two for Orange and Chris. Uh, We have uh, Proud and Powerful and Jake Hager versus FTR and Wardlow. Uh, after the craziness that ensued on Wednesday night, of course, the Pinnacle and the Inner Circle are still at each other's throats. Uh, I'm intrigued to see if they can do this through the summer to All Out to see what kind of a fucking blow-off match we get then. Um, they've already had War Games in a stadium stampede match. I don't know what more they can do. But by God, do I like seeing these ten guys interact with each other. Yep. Uh, Sean Spears is like sex face after hitting um, Guevara with that chair that was <laughs> chef's fingers, man. Chef's fingers. Um, but anyway, we have... Uh, I really, I really got to go back and watch last night's Dynamite. Yeah, it, it, was, it, it was a banger. Uh, uh, Bucks versus Penta and Eddie was really good too. So um, yeah, man, it was it was, it was was a good show. Um, so yeah, uh, Proud, and Fire, Proud and Powerful and Jake Hager versus FTR and Wardlow. Pootski, lead us off. Uh, I'm going to put my three, um, or my my two, rather, um, on uh, FTR and Wardlow. One vote for the Pinnacle. Ransom. (laughs) What's my lowest one that I have left? A three. A three, yep. Yeah, baby, let's put a three. And, uh, yeah, I think... uh, I think I'll do the same as Poot. Let's put it on the pinnacle. Tiger Bomb. Now, this is where we're going to vary. I am going to put three on Pride and Powerful. And only because the fact that MJF kind of got over on Sammy by the end of it. I, I, I assume because I, I saw like Instagram or something from Sammy saying, you know, last night might not have been my night, but I'm going to keep plugging on, blah, 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 blah. So I'm assuming MJF won last night on Dynamite, correct? Yes, after the aforementioned Sean Spears yeah. first shot with O-Face. So, so we gotta so we gotta keep yeah, we gotta keep things going. We don't want either faction looking too too powerful. I say pride and powerful, three points. Because uh, I, I don't am... I don't remember what all points I have left anyways. I don't No, I you used... already used a three pointer. This is gonna have to be a four or five for you. Wait, what have what have I used on what so far? Uh, you put three on Cody, one on Andrade, two on Orange Statlander. Oh, okay. Well, then, yeah, four pointer on this. That's good. Uh, and that's that's good rationale. But um, with Hager going over Wardlow in the cage match here um, a couple weeks ago, which was fun to watch, by the way, uh, I think that Wardlow is going to be looking for some redemption. Uh, so I think that the uh, Pinnacle will go over here, but I'm not confident in that. That's why it's one point for me. Finally, rounding out the card, we have the Young Bucks defending their tag team championships against Penta, El Zero, Miedo, and Eddie Kingston, who uh, won the... Uh, I, I, I like and hate that AEW calls them Eliminator matches. Basically, it's to see if they deserve a shot at the title. So uh, last night on Dynamite, the uh, Penta and uh, Eddie uh, faced the Young Bucks, and they beat them in an on-title match, which basically qualified them for this match uh, next week. 
Uh, I think it's a fun gimmick, and I I'm I'm here for it. I just think that the Eliminator is kind of a dumb name for it. Um, but all that said, by the way, the Young Bucks are the longest reigning tag team champions in AEW history. Uh, I know everybody's shocked at that, but uh, I I I didn't figure we'd get that so soon. Uh, so Young Bucks, the champions versus Penta and Eddie, the challengers for the titles. Ransom. What? Well, Young I don't Bucks. Pick. No, I don't want to pick it. No, All right, pass. well. <laughs> oh, Ransom puts uh, uh, four, four points on, on a, uh, uh, a tie here. Uh, moving four on. Points on uh, four <laughs> points on TBA. <laughs> um, That's just going to work here, brother. So, fuck. Um, four points on a dusty finish. Nobody wins. <laughs> Time no limit draw. Win. Time limit draw. <laughs> Time. Ooh, no. Um. Okay, so I, I feel like I have a rationale, but I feel like my rationale is flimsy at best. But, like I said before, I've resigned myself to I've resigned myself to the fact that I am a one and done champion. So, what the fuck does it really matter? Uh, I'm gonna say Young Bucks. Now, I know they've been winning a lot and have been holding on to those titles a lot, but I feel like with a tag team of the caliber of the Young Bucks, when they lose the title, I feel like it's going to be a loss, A, at a big event, just because they've been holding on to them for so long, and B, I feel like they're going to lose it to, oh, nice fireworks, damn it. Um, B, I feel like they're going to lose it to an actual team. I feel like Penta and Eddie Kingston, as much of a talent as those two are, I just, and this is where I feel like my rationale is flimsy. I, I feel like the Bucks are going to lose these titles to an established team or an up and coming team. They're going to lose it to a hard and fast team, not to two guys who are just randomly paired together for the sake of reasons. If it was Penta and uh, what's his guy? Ray he Phoenix. Ray Phoenix. Yeah, yes. the actual was, Lucha Brothers. If it was the Lucha Brothers, I would have a lot harder time picking between those two because I feel like, damn, if anybody could do it, it's the fucking Lucha Brothers. But since it's Penta and Eddie Kingston, I feel like, why would they take the titles off the Young Bucks and give it to these two guys who are essentially two guys thrown together into a team that's why I'm picking the Young Bucks. Well, a little bit of background for you just to kind of remind everybody. Keep in mind that uh, a couple of months ago, uh, Eddie and uh, Penta and Ray Phoenix were all part of the Eddie Kingston family, uh, along with Butcher and the Blade and the Bunny. And uh, Eddie always refers to Penta as his best friend. Um, I, don't know. I, I don't know if that's legit or not, but... Um, so there, there, there is a history here. It's not like they're just kind of thrown together. I think Phoenix is hurt. I want to say, he um, is. and I know Moxley's out for you know being a papa. So um, you know they they're they're making the best out of a bad situation. Not not a bad situation. They're they're making the best out of what they got. They're saying okay, well you know Moxley's teammate and Phoenix's teammate are without teammates and they have a history. So let's just run with it. Uh, so, th so there is a history there, but, you know, th take that as you will. So you're saying Young Bucks for four points, yes, Ransom? Yes, sir. That's my last pick and the last point I have left, right? Yes, yes. That's Okie dokie. All is true. Tom, who you got? Uh, well, I obviously have five points on this pick because that's all that's left, and I'm going with Young Bucks. Um. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not much more needs to be said. Uh, I... I there's especially with Penta and Eddie just beating them last night. I can't see them beating them two weeks in a row. Uh, I can't see the young bucks. So I think that the elite will crumble over the summer. Uh, I think that Kenny Omega's title will be the last to fall at all out against hangman. Um, so I think that the young bucks probably have a title loss coming at some point, probably in the lead up. Two all out, uh, a la maybe Fighter Fest or uh, Fight for the Fallen coming up, or you know Random Dynamite, maybe one in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, but uh, 
Yeah, I, R Ransom said it best. Like, this is two guys who are more or less cobbled together because of circumstances. Um, if this was the Lucha Brothers, I'd have a better shot at saying definitely, or, or you know, more more likely to say, hey, they could beat them here. But uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 the box, and I got four points on it. Poot, finish us off, buddy. Law Bucks win five. <laughs> yeah, so there are our picks. Uh, they are in stone as we no longer do the uh, last call. So uh, looks like we're pretty much in agreement for Road Rager. The only outlier is uh, Tom picking the inner circle over the pinnacle. Uh, otherwise, everybody picked exactly the same on that. Uh, but Great American Bash will be interesting with our picks. Uh, so, uh, as always, we want you. I, I just I just pointed at my microphone. To yes. Participate. Get your picks in by Saturday, by noon. Email us, Pittsburgh Power Driver Podcast at gmail dot com. Facebook message us. Just message the page. Somebody will get it. I promise. Or what I'm going to start doing now is uh, after we do the podcast, I'm going to post the matches that we picked this week. We can just keep it all inclusive there. If you want to reply to that post, put who you think are going to win each of the matches and assign each of them a point total based upon the number of the matches on the card. Get in on this. I promise you this is not a bait and switch. We will send you the title and if you win if you win you won't win because it's you know you won't win but if you win we'll send you the title <laughs> now Love keep that. in mind too and i i don't want to turn this into a logistics segment of the podcast i just want to touch on this because i feel like this is a very important point strictly from my own uh Strictly from my own whatever. I'm going to go and buy, you know, a chintzy WWE title belt from Walmart, Target, you pick. And I will send that to you on my dime. And you customize it how you see fit. When you lose that belt, because let's face it, no one holds onto the belt forever. The caveat here is you send that belt back to me on your dime. If you don't want to participate in that, if you don't want to do shipping, if you don't want to cover that, that's perfectly fine with me. You tell me that, or you tell us that in your post. You make your own belt out of whatever you have. This doesn't have to be a thing where, like, we have to send it to you and you have to send it back. If shipping charges or logistics is something you don't want involved in, that's fine with me. Just let us know that so we don't send you a belt. But if you're good with that, and we send you a belt to customize, and you lose and don't send that belt back, you're done. You're out for good. You're not going to get another chance at this. I'm not going to have this be a revolving door of me constantly going out and spending money on plastic Valkyrie belts to send out to people and just have it be a money pit of people not sending that shit back. Yep. I want this to be participating. I want you guys to be involved in the podcast, but I'm not going to take a hit on my own personal bank account by constantly going out and buying belts and sending them out to people to not get them back. That's the and only thing I ask is if we send you the belt, that's with the understanding of you cover the shipping cost to send it back. This is a community and we're all <laughs> friends and we trust each other. So and, don't um, be a bag of dicks. Bum. <laughs> and there is one other thing logistics wise in the uh, in the customizing of the belt. It's been said before, but in case somebody didn't catch it, you got to suck Tom's dick. regardless. Regardless if we send you a belt or if you have your own that you do, you customize it how you want. However, there must be the Pittsburgh Pile Driver Podcast logo center of the belt. So, yeah, or you can do something crazy like spray paint a, the P3 on the belt like some idiot did to his belt. Right. So one way or another, it's got to it's got to have something to do with P3 on the face plate of that title because let's face it, this is our championship. You've just won it from us. That's all. Right. Right. But there has to be has to be some sort of uh, delineation that it is the the P3 
you know, choose your way championship. Gotta, so gotta, if you gotta and start if getting you, that word in there, choose your way, because you know, marketability, we, it's, it's the choose your way championship, not the P3 title, the choose your way championship. And, and if you, if you uh, need the, if you need the logo or whatever, you know, message us, let us know. We can get it to you in a uh, PNG or JPEG format or whatever. Yeah, we'll man. Get it to you. Or, or maybe we'll be nice enough to put the logo on the front of the belt for you, and then you can do whatever the hell you else you want with it. Um, you know, also Color thinking it with crayon for all I care. Who cares? Thinking, thinking on ransom's dime again. We ask that any alterations you make to the title be cosmetic and something that we can remove. Don't like if if if, if we put a logo on it and you want to spray paint over the logo, that's fine because we can just take that logo off and put another one on. It's a piece of paper. That's fine. If you take a knife to the belt and write, you know, my name is Dick and I'm an asshole, like scrawl that with a knife on the leather of the belt, you know, that's not cool, man. Ready? So, so You're just, done. Just, You're out. TL, you TLDR, know. don't be a dick, be a dude. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't be a dick. This is something to be fun. We're giving, you know, a, a, the old adage, enough rope to hang yourself with. So have have some fun here. It is worth mentioning, though, as, as, as we close as we close out the picks here. That uh, last week, or last month rather, Denny uh, from D- Denny uh, Fedor from uh, 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 Pro Wrestling Talk now and then, he came within two points of uh, taking home the uh, inaugural Choose Rate Open. So oh, we my. almost had to um, put our money with the mouth where, where our mouth was. Uh, last month ended up as Ransom with twenty nine points, Denny with twenty seven. Poot and Pat. Pat came from way behind with the uh, end up at 26. Good job, Tom the had 25, bastard. And I had 23 because I put all my money in Drew McIntyre not fucking thinking about it. So uh, yeah, we're always excited for the Choose, choose Wait Open. Get those picks in. Again, email pittsburghpotterpodcast.gmail.com Facebook message us or comment on the Facebook post that I will make with the matches. We're just going to keep everything contained there. One post, you'll see it on the page. Reply to it with your picks. And the point values, you're golden. Moving on, gentlemen. It has been a fair... It's been, it's been a couple weeks since we talked. Since we've had one of our fireside chats here. Ooh. Um, hey, wasn't there a title change? Yeah. There was. Yeah. Oh, kind of. Wow. I'm so I'm happy about that. Well, wow. Bro. All right. Well, let's get a let's let's get a a, a a a a beef recap of what happened, and then I will I will voice my opinion. Oh my. Uh well, my my, my initial like Ooh. you know uh, newspaper headline read as thick boy season officially over. Uh, but 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 I was uh, informed Sick. that thick boy season would never end. So you know, good on that. But yeah, uh, on Wednesday or Tuesday, that's so tough to say. Tuesday night on NXT, Bronson Reed lost the North American Championship to Isaiah Swerve Scott. Um, I and, and I I um, you know what? Go go ahead, Poot. I'm 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 not gonna step on your toes. I think I think I, I think we both have the same mentality here. But go go ahead, Poot. All right. Well. I, I just feel like my biggest umbrage with this was that it was, in my opinion, and, and this could be biased because I really like Bronson Reed. I think he is kind of this generation's second coming of the big man that can move and is really entertaining. Um, and, uh, yeah, he's the Bigelow. He's the, uh, Vader. you know, Vader. Like, he's he's that thing, and he, and he backs it up. Um, like... The the thing that I'm if it was anybody else who took that belt, I would be throwing a beef style fit. Um <laughs> but because because it was Isaiah Swerve Scott and how in I am on the whole um on the whole hit row thing and what how how Swerve is selling this character and the people around him are selling the gimmick and selling what this is. I can be, I'm, 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 it's one of those things that I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. Um, it really is that way because I, I think I, I, it is Papa Poots here. All right. Sit on my, sit on my lap. Let me, let me teach you a life lesson. Oh, um, 
It's going to teach you about six to midnight. What? <laughs> Jesus, man. Um, anyway. Um, all right. So here, here's my thing. I feel like this was just done too Sorry. soon. I feel like, I feel like Bronson Reed had Bronson Reed had so much more room and time to do this. The problem is they white meat baby faced him. And I think Bronson Reed would do better in a tweener or even a heel roll. I really do. Um, more vicious, more beast-like, you know, more animalistic, or even taking the route of a Bam Bam Bigelow, more matter-of-fact, and more just, all right, I'm coming here, and you're going to lose. You're going to lose because when, I'm going to beat you. Uh, it was um, – it was um, – the most wasn't recent it takeover? Yeah, was it Mania takeover. Yeah, Mania. No. Ta nope. Yeah, wasn't uh -uh. it? It was the one after that. It was. It was the one. It, oh, it, you know what? It may have been Stand Deliver Night too. I. I think I it, was it was the most recent one. No, I thought it was no, Stand no, and no, Deliver. It was, it was the most recent one because remember Stand and Deliver was uh, night one was, um, you know, Bronson won the that yeah, um, that no, Rumble. Didn't. Yeah, uh, he he won the he won the 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 Battle Royal. With LA Knight in there and everything like that. Oh, for yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Face Johnny. And I think I was the only one that picked Johnny on Stand and Deliver, mm -hmm. yeah. if I remember correctly. Yep. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. Yep. So he so won it, was... it on the most recent takeover and then just lost it now. That's fast. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that's my point is that the, and, and, and we talked about this, is that the, really the only logical reason why this is happening is he's probably getting fast-tracked to the main roster where he's going to yep. get funkasaurus Wait, um, no. Please, it, no. Wait, it might please. not. You know, you know what? It what? I don't think it, it was. was on uh, a random, I don't think it was on a random episode of NXT. I think. It was on a random episode, yeah, because I was going to say he, um, because the last takeover, uh, it, it was wasn't a even a takeover. It, it was, was a in cage your house match. and it, yeah, um, it was, I was gonna say was the last, NXT. the last, the last time that there was the the NXT pay per view or whatever was in your house, and that was when they had the um, the six the, the six man thing. It was a winner take all thing. Yeah, yep. yeah, because we and, just picked that like last month or whatever. So, so Jeez. yeah. So he hasn't my, had he's he hasn't had it for very long. No, you're not wrong. He yeah. hasn't had it very long, and that's my point. And I think right. The, the, there's either that logic or it's the logic that you know people are digging hit rows so much they're like you know what let's let's just fast track him let's put this belt on swerve scott and give him that extra you know swagger and clout and bragging rights to really push this character further that could very well be the case however like hit row has been a thing for what a month like mm -hmm. I get it, but I feel like NXT is starting to book things really fast, and they're starting Dude, to like. Swerve's been, Swerve's been I'm grinding, not though. finished to <laughs> to quote Ransom. I'm not finished. No, that was Beef. Beef did that. Oh, that's yeah. right. Oh, I'm not quote, you trick. Oh well, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, my point is, I know Swerve has been cutting his teeth. I know Swerve. I know Swerve has been doing his thing. <sighs> I know he's deserved it. They covered it on the whole breakout star thing. It's been two years since we've seen Swerve debut. I get it. And he's been miring. You know, he's been around. He's been doing his thing. But Hit Row's the first time that they've really given him, uh, you know, a character that he can sink his, his grill into. So, like, my, my point is... I'm excited to see where Swerve is going with this, but like, why did it have to be at the cost of Bronson Reed? Like, that's what bothers me is that like you have for the first time in a while, Samoa Joe aside, where you have a bigger guy, a big chonky boy, like you look at him and go, damn boy, that's a thick boy. You know what I mean? And someone who can really move and make a match entertaining and, and have it have it be like, oh, damn, this guy can do more than just chuck people around the ring like Ooh. and 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 you put the belt on him and there was this triumphant thing. And it's like, man, this is going to be a run at least a couple months. And it wasn't because it's at the cost to put over Swerve Scott, which, again, may not be the worst call in the world. I'll fully admit that. But, man. I wanted to see what Reed was going to do. I really did. So Swerve's a grinder, man. Like if if anybody on the roster deserves this, it's 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 Swerve. He's been 
He's been, I mean, he was stuck in a fucking feud with Leon Ruff. God bless Leon Ruff, but he's all 45 pounds, man. Like, I, I'm, 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 I'm glad he's kind of in the shade right now. Thank um, you. Not a, not a big Leon Ruff fan. Uh, so Swerve made that feud. Uh, and, and he's been just, just grinding away, man. So good <clears throat> on him. The reason for this title change is 100% because Bronson Reed's heading to the main roster. And that's why I'm sad. Uh, and, and I, and you know, I, I, I get it. Like, to the wrestlers going to the main roster is like the big time. This is the, this this is why they this is why they do it so that they can wrestle on Raw and SmackDown, pay per views, WrestleMania, SummerSlam, etc. Like, I, I I understand that, and I'm you know I'm I'm not in charge of anybody's finances but my own, so I'm sure that it probably comes with a pretty big pocketbook too. But as a fan. Watching the product, we know what'll happen the yep. minute that he hits the main roster. Yep. Um, Funkasaurus is best case scenario. Worst oh case my. scenario is like fucking um, the Ascension, where they came in, they looked cool, then it became an absolute joke. Uh, Vince likes big guys, but he don't like fat guys, which. Oh. Yeah makes me wonder so and this is just uh scuttle butting off of that uh the last week two weeks ago i don't recall bronson reed wrestled on main event and uh carrying cross wrestled on main event without scarlet scarlet later had a match by herself and i don't recall who against who what the hell but yeah yeah so main that event. yeah main oh. event so like that's that that is its own completely separate thread. I'm I'm not pulling at that just yet. But both of these guys, Creed, Creed, Reed, and Cross, have basically had uh debut matches for the main roster to show what they can do. And and apparently, uh, uh the the heads at the main at the, at, at the main office were like, yeah, let's get Bronson Reed up. I <laughs> Ooh, here's the kind you know, of. So you and, and I, I I used the 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 f word very very gingerly, but you know the last fat guy that hit the main roster with absolute incredible talent. Damn you know what happened Lee. to him? Yep, Keith Lee. Now, <clears throat> if you believe Booker T, he says that uh, Keith Lee was supposed to be WWE champion before Bobby Lashley happened. I don't buy that. Uh, I think no I need way. Booker T just being a fucking company shill. I don't yep. trust anything Booker T says anymore because I think he's just got the company's best interest in in, in his mind. Yeah, bottom line he's is all this: shuck, he's all shucky ducky quack quack nonsense. Yep, fucking. yep, be, yep. Because he can still show up at those pre shows that like five people, including myself, watch and cash his checks from the company, uh, and then do absolutely nothing. But uh, and, and again, I'm, I'm not I'm trying to make this about Keith Lee. I'm just you know putting that image in everyone's mind. That the same damn thing is going to happen to Bronson Reed. He's going to come up, look like a house of fire for maybe a month. Vince will go, "What are we doing, this fat guy?" And then that's it. Look at look look at Otis. Like Otis was on top yep. of the world last year. He won fucking Money in the Bank. Yep. They had no idea what to do with them, so they took away his tag team. They took away his arm candy. They took away his beard. They took away everything fun about him. And have made him just a pasty faced heel. What have they? What? How? How did Otis lose his money in the bank thing? Like, or how did it was? It was. It, uh, it, was, it was lost to the Miz. Yep. It was. Oh, in, that's in, right. In wrestler's court, JBL gave it to the Miz for you know reasons because you know Vince McMahon hates fat guys. He loves them for a little bit un, un, until he gets sick of them. I, I literally think. He's a jackass that laughs at them and goes, ha, 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 look at that big fatty go. Yeah, I, I didn't I Look didn't at even that recall. flubber fly. Well, that's the thing. Oh. I, did, I, couldn't, I couldn't even recall how in the world, like, Otis lost it to the Miz. I forgot that Miz did finally, he ended up cashing in, obviously, or whatever. But, like, yep. I forgot. I'm like, how the, I forgot how the hell Miz came to get that off of Otis. Um, there was one thing I was going to mention with, uh, with all this Bronson Reed stuff. If... If they're not going to take him up to the main roster, do you guys think that them taking the title off of Bronson Reed could potentially put him in a push 
for the NXT uh, title against Karrion Cross. Don't all that's claim a good. Once. That's a good. <laughs> you know what? That's a really good point. That's a really good idea. However, I just don't think that that. <sighs> I don't I don't I don't think that shit's going to flush. Like it's it's a really good idea. That is excellent booking. And that's why I don't think it will happen. <laughs> because it's okay. excellent booking. Like <laughs> I think it would be really yeah. good maybe they saw in Bronson Reed, "Oh, this guy's bigger than a mid-card title. Let's put him in the hunt and see what he can do against someone like like cross because him and cross because cross can go bronson can go they could make it really entertaining really entertaining so who knows that's a good point uh, tom this is uh this is completely random um <clears throat> but i just saw the uh the pop-up notification on my uh, on my phone from youtube um <laughs> it, it was from uh nwa power oh boy uh Kylie Ray versus Melina. I didn't realize that Kylie Ray was in NWA. I thought she had, uh, after uh, she was uh, departed AEW, I didn't know what she was doing there for a while. She, I don't remember if she faffed around in Impact for a little bit. Um, <clears throat> and then I thought she was like done. Yeah, uh, yeah the last time I first, she was done. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize that she was in NWA. Yeah, I didn't either. That, but, uh, well, like, is that kind of like one of those like one offs? I don't know. Or do you, you know, I, I think it's all going to depend on, did she sign with NWA? Is she a permanent fixture there? Or is this kind of like a, oh, she wanted something to do, and they were like, hey, have a match. Um, yeah, I honestly have no question. I, I literally Kylie just saw Ray. the... Yeah, smiley yeah, Kylie. Kylie Ray. She, she signed. Did oh, she? Really? She, did. She, is, she is with NWA, yep. Interesting. Wow. Now, listen, so, I have two questions that I want to harken back to this Bronson Reed. Yeah, I can I can I get beef's uh, beef's opinion? Yeah, 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 on, yeah. Uh, beef. While you were gone, I had said, uh, "What you know? If they don't take uh, Bronson Reed to main roster, what do you think the legs are on um, them possibly putting them in the hunt for the NXT Championship against Cross?" Zero. Okay. Zero, wow. because Cross has lined up Gargano right now. He's feuding with. Right. Adam Cole on the back burner, and then Samoa Joe on the, like, hey, this is going to happen at some point, we just don't know when. So, I mean, Cross has, and I don't mean to belittle Bronston Reed whenever I say big opponents, but, like, when you start having conversations about great talents in NXT, and I lo again, I love Bronson Reed, but he's no Johnny Gargano, he's no Adam Cole, he's no, he's no Samoa Joe. Uh, I think if he had a couple more years in NXT, yeah, he could definitely hold up. But as far as him beating Cross, zero. Or even facing Cross, zero. Jeez. Facing Cross, I, I think you're wrong on. But beating Cross, I think you're right. Maybe. What's up, okay. Ransom? You, 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 okay. you had questions for me. Yeah, two questions here. You know, and this is for everybody. Um, one no, is kind of like a... me. Go ahead. Yeah, well, all right, listen. I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> Suck an ass. Nice. Um, so, one, I guess, a more serious question than the other. The less serious question first. If Bronson Reed goes to the main roster, how soon do you think, if at all, we see a comedy tag team of Bronson Reed and... Uh, What's the other big boy that went up there and they're doing nothing with? Sir Keith Lee. Keith Lee. What, what's, what's the likelihood and how fast do we see a comedy tag team between those two, a la Funkasaurus and Tensai? I don't think that's going to be the case. I think there would be way too much backlash from that. I really oh, do. I think I... there would be an insane amount of backlash from that. I really don't think Keith Lee's going to come back. You think just he's done with WWE? Oh yeah. Just with wow. how cryptic he's been, how guarded he's been on Twitter and everything, I, unless they come at him with a blockbuster like, "Hey, we want you to be the new guy," I don't see him coming back because I think that 
I, I honestly kind of feel like what Booker T was saying had some truth in it. That they probably were looking at Keith Lee at being the guy to beat McIntyre and the guy to hold the title through the summer until he gets beat by probably Brock Lesnar or somebody. Um, or maybe even McIntyre. But at some point, somebody got cold feet. And by somebody, I mean Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Got cold feet and was like, nope, we're not doing it. And so Keith is like, fuck you, I'm not coming to work. And that's been that. Now, allegedly there's some injury stuff going on too. That we we know that Vince gets gonna try around injuries too, so that could all play a part in this, but I would not be shocked uh if if Keith if Keith Lee never wrestled another match in WWE. Damn. Okay. So I guess my more serious question then is if our rumors, our assumptions are to be correct, and Bronson Reed is being fast tracked to the main roster, is there a possibility that we see him in the Money in the Bank ladder match this month? Because, like we talked about, yes, he's a big dude. Money in the Bank ladder matches usually feature a big dude. Uh, you know, if not for stabilizing the ladder in a certain spot, let's face it, I don't want to take away anything from the likes of, uh, you know, people like Kane. Kane's been in several Money in the Bank ladder matches. Kane is a phenomenal wrestler. I'm not, I'm not comparing him, or I'm not saying that, like, he's a big guy that's in that match strictly to hold the ladder for a certain spot. Not saying that at all. But generally, the bigger guy at some point in a Money in the Bank ladder match does wind up as a stabilizing agent. But... Like we have said about Bronson Reed, yes, he's a bigger guy, but he's a bigger guy that can do amazing things in the ring like a Bam Bam Bigelow. Is there a possibility that we see him in the Money in the Bank ladder match? No, because Kevin I, Owens Before be we had this conversation... Slot. Huh? No, because Kevin Owens is going to be filling that slot. Real? Okay. I'll well, fill in your slot. I don't know. What no, damn it. Um, now, you know, I, I was kind of fantasy booking Adam Cole into that match, but... If that's not something that's that's bound to happen, I just I feel like if they're gonna send Bronson Reed to the main roster, good lord, would he not make an impact in the Money in the Bank ladder match? Even if Kevin Owens is in it, like even if Kevin Owens is there in the match, couldn't you have also Bronson Reed in there as well? Theoretically, um, yeah. Uh, so right but now, you're not banking have... on something like that happening. Um... We'll see. Uh, I I honestly think that Bronson Reed's debut could come as soon as tomorrow night. Oh shit! Um, yeah, because that's like literally a fast track. Um, there there are two more TBDs. Um, in in the Money Bank ladder match right now we have Ricochet, John Morrison, Riddle, Ricochet. McIntyre, Big E, Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn. Uh, I'm sorry, Kevin Owens or Sami Zayn. Excuse me. Um, so, and then, and then two more spots to be named. So Kevin Owens isn't officially in the Money in the Bank match. I guess that's going to be taking place on SmackDown to determine who goes in from that match. Um, okay. All right. So it's, it's conceivable that he could debut tomorrow night and, uh, run rough shot over somebody, get in there. I, I just, I, I'd like to see it. I think that'd be super cool, and I think that'd be a real good way to start his tenure on on the main roster. Um, we'll see. I, I, I just don't have faith in the main roster anymore, man. For example, on, uh, on, on Monday Night Raw, there was a last chance triple threat match between Riddle, who was representing Randy Orton, <laughs> AJ Styles, and Drew McIntyre, whoever won that match would be in the Money in the Bank ladder match. Obviously, Drew McIntyre won because, LOL, McIntyre wins. Um, and, and I get the feeling, because, again, let me run through these names real quick. Ricochet, Morrison, Riddle, McIntyre, Big E, Owens or Zayn, and two more TBD. Like, that's not exactly a, <coughs> excuse me, a murderer's row of Money in the Bank. Now, we've seen you know, people that 
come out of nowhere and have great sensational money in the banks, like Kane, like Shelton Benjamin, uh, Kennedy, CM Punk, all of these guys kind of used, with the exception of Kane, but the other three kind of used money in the bank as a stepping stone to kind of build their career and show, hey, I'm a, I'm a hot upcoming talent. Drew McIntyre doesn't need to win Money in the Bank, but I get the feeling the way that the field is reading right now is that that's Drew's Money in the Bank contract to lose. And I, and I could be wrong, but uh, I, I I just don't see any... I, I mean, Bronson Breed could have a great showing in that match, but at the end of the day, I think regardless of who else goes in there, it's McIntyre's match to lose. Which oh my gosh, really? Mm-hmm. Well, that's, which, that's by the, the way... way that's the way they get around that. Like we mentioned before, that's the way they get around drew losing that, uh, you know, last chance hell in the cell match. Well, mm-hmm. now if he wins the money in the bank, well, he's guaranteed a WWE, uh, ty- some sort of yeah. title match, but this could be the stepping stone to take him over to SmackDown and have him be the foil to Roman reigns for wow. the universal title. Clearly people want to see drew McIntyre win because raw had the lowest rating of any non-holiday this year uh, with 1.5. Uh, Dynamite, just as an example, I think their first Wednesday night unopposed were like 1.1. So, like, that's not a far reach, man. Uh, an, an extra 500,000 viewers is not a far reach at all. I I just, man, I, and I feel bad because, you know, McIntyre has got the whole package. But... <clears throat> I, I I think last year really soured a lot of people, a lot, a lot of fans on McIntyre. Yeah, but I don't think that was his fault. I think a lot of it was situational. I really it's not, do. It's not at all. But the I think Thunderdome's fault. Uh, well, but and, am I am I am I wrong? I assuming. Good. Sorry. I think it's the pushing. I think. Yep. And again, like we have said, it's no fault of Drew McIntyre's. He's not. I don't feel like he's doing anything to warrant the backlash or disinterest. I think it's the fact that it's WWE and they're constant pushing. Like they're pushing Drew McIntyre when people are sad to say, sick of seeing Drew McIntyre in the title picture, which I think leads to disinterest, probably more disinterest than backlash, you know, and dislike for McIntyre. Just, you know, I don't, he's not gotten to Cena level, I don't think. But I think it's I think it's getting there. Like I think people are like, oh, here's another title match, or here's another title opportunity. Oh look, Drew McIntyre. Okay, like yeah. I mean they've done it before. They'll do it again. Let's do it. He's well, just funny to me. Like I'm sorry, go ahead, Poot. Well, I I was just gonna say that like, you know the the thing that kind of bothers me with Drew McIntyre is how they protect him. You know what I mean? They have him in these matches. Um, they have him in these matches. And he, he loses, but he doesn't get the pin. He's just constantly there to lose the match, but not get pinned or not win the damn thing. At what point does the shine, like, does that stop working? And eventually you're just like, oh, this guy never wins. You know I what I has. mean? I can think it has. I think we've gotten to that point. I've what? gotten to that point. I can't speak about the masses, but I know that I've gotten to that point. Yeah, and, and that's what I'm going to say is I think that I can speak for all of us the way I can say that I'm kind of sick of Drew McIntyre. Again, he's not doing anything wrong. It's just where he's at. Now, here's the here's, here's the correlation I want to make real quick. Um, Juicy sentence. Uh, McIntyre had about eight months on top last mania to about January or so this year. And then uh, Kenny Omega has had about eight months on top last December until now. Um, Kenny Omega, we, the collective we, I think the, the internet wrestling community is looking on with beta breath saying, what's Kenny going to do next? And yes, I know that Kenny puts on outstanding matches every time he gets in the ring. I, I am very much aware that Kenny Omega is not Drew McIntyre and vice versa. I, I get that. But I mean, even if Kenny wasn't putting on five star matches, everybody in the internet wrestling, everybody in the wrestling world is like, what's Omega going to do next? Like, I, I can't wait to see how this Omega saga unfolds. And even though Omega's being pushed down our throats by AEW, no one's throwing up their hands and saying, 
what the hell, man? What, what, when's Omega going to lose? But McIntyre had the... And, and we're, we're talking damn near the same exact time frame. About eight months of, of constant pushing. That's the difference. That's what good booking can do for you. And yep. sometimes, to be honest with you, sometimes not being seen can do wonders for you. The fact that they have McIntyre on every fucking week without fail is, I think, part of the problem. Well, also, too, I think it, it, it like you said, it does come down to booking. It, it comes down to, you know, it, it can really come down to who is in the booking with them because even the last couple, you know, the last couple of times, like whenever it was, you know, Omega and Moxley, like, you know, there was a real legit threat there to to Kenny's championship and stuff like that. And then even with that triple threat match with him and Pac and, and uh, Orange Cassidy, man, like there was a couple times where we were really going like, could this be where they take it off Omega? Like it really it really gave you enough of a little bit of doubt uh, to to really kind of be taken back in the wonder and the awe of of pro wrestling instead of being the the you know the the grumpy old jaded fan that's like well i know what's gonna happen you know what i mean like mm-hmm. um yeah. but 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 i think that i i guess I, I i guess maybe it's because and i don't know if this is just if it's an old guard versus new guard sort of thing like aew's newer they're a younger company so they they have a little bit more that like they can get away with or it's just the fact that WWE is like so formulaic or whatever that you know we we kind of know this is what they do this is how they operate for so long we don't we don't quite have that beat on AEW because they legit make they make more people feel like that they uh, that they could be a credible threat or there are more stars there's you know i mean like there's obviously there's top tier stars in either company respectively like you know who you know like like whenever we were picking andrade versus matt seidel like you know that andrade is the you know the newest big free agent star on the scene so obviously matt seidel is there to you know enhance but like i i don't know i th- I don't know. I just, I just feel like with WWE, it's it seems very very obvious in the directions that they want to go it, more often than it does with AEW and stuff like that. So I think that could be why. But also, it, I think Kenny. I don't know. I, I guess with Kenny Omega, he's just more entertaining than Drew McIntyre is on the mic, you know, in the ring, stuff like that. Not you know, no discredit to Drew and what he can do in the ring, but I'm sorry, like. As far as microphone skills go, man, Kenny Omega has him beat hands down. Well, on the other side I, of the coin is I this. Think you're... Oh. Sorry, go no, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Well, I was, I was going to make this point that I think it's the difference between. So I, I'll be the first to argue that AEW is fairly, uh, fairly uh, organic, but yet formulaic as well. Like we can pretty much go through and go, okay, this makes sense for you, and that's why all of our picks were pretty much in line on AEW, save for a couple. And, and most pay-per-views with AEW are pretty easy to pick, and we, we score fairly well because it fairly makes sense. A plus B equals C. They don't outthink themselves. They have long-term booking. WWE turns wildly at the whims of an octogenarian. Is he 80? It, it might just be a septuagenarian at this point. It, regardless of an old, old man. WWE can't book from week to week without him going, you know what? Let's do something else here. Let's rewrite the script, you know, five hours, hours before yeah, the show. Hours before the taping begins. I, I just, like, that's, in, in a nutshell, what the problem is. If they had an idea for Drew McIntyre, I think they would have been okay. And honestly, credit where credit's due. I think that they have a long-term plan for Roman Reigns, and I think that's why Roman Reigns has been so damn entertaining the last, yep. you know, six months or so, because they are, and, and they have the capability to have the blinders on and to have long-term booking. 
they just don't apply it through the whole card. Yep. They look at they, they they pick and choose where they're going and how they want to get there. And and that's what's frustrating because we know like SmackDown generally is a pretty good show. We know they have the talent. We know that they have good bookers. We know they have good producers and God knows they have great production values. They don't have an announcer going, thanks for watching AW SmackDown, everybody. No. They have the best talent in the world. I'll, I'll, I'll say that outright. AEW has some great talent for sure, but I think WWE has the best smattering of talent. It's just, it's frustrating because it bends on the whim of Vince McMahon so often. And, and that's, that's, that's where this happens. That's where this things collide and things don't work out for guys like Drew McIntyre. So it, it sucks, but that's, you know, I, and I think we're all kind of on the same page here with Drew where it's like, yeah, he's been pushed down throats and we're now sick of seeing him. So now we're like, no, keep him the hell away from the title. So, of course, he's going to win Money in the Bank. So, I believe that you're, uh, yeah, I believe that you're 100% accurate in that because if I'm remembering right, and I'm sure one of you will correct me if I'm wrong, um, but I think that this even harkens back to the podcast that um, CM Punk did after he left when he was the champion, but in the booking meetings, all Vince McMahon wanted to do was talk about What's next with John Cena? What are they going to do next with John Cena? What are they doing with John Cena? And CM Punk's like, hey, man, I'm, I'm the champ here. Are we, are we not talking about, like, what, what, what am I going to be doing? Like, nope, it was always about what's next with John Cena. What are we going to do with John Cena? What's John Cena doing on this show? What's he going to do on the next show? And I almost feel like that's, that's what they're doing now, except they're doing it with Roman Reigns. Now, and again... No fault to Roman Reigns. I think what they're doing with him is amazing, but I think they're so, they have the blinders on. Excuse me. Vince McMahon has the blinders on, and all he cares about is what's next with Roman Reigns? What are we going to do with Roman Reigns? Where's Roman Reigns going? And they're too focused on that, and they're not looking at the broader picture of, hey, man, we have this whole roster of talent. We, maybe we give some, maybe we put some eyes on this, this talent and, and book some of this shit out longer than five hours before the show. Now, I understand that we, I understand that we have Money in the Bank picks coming up. And, you know, I, I don't want to shift towards Money in the Bank because I know we have picks coming up. But generally, I am interested, choose a way title aside, I'm generally interested in who you guys think could be walking away with this title. From the sounds of it, it sounds like beef is, is pretty cemented in the fact that Drew McIntyre is going to wind up winning this Money in the Bank match. Uh, do you guys concur? Uh, you know, Beef, do you see any possibility that anybody else wins, or is it pretty much a foregone conclusion? doesn't matter who the other TBAs are probably going to wind up being freaking uh, Drew McIntyre. I mean, how well, far away is SummerSlam from Money in the Bank? Um, About a month. Month, yeah. Yeah, Money in the Bank is later this month. SummerSlam would be August. August 21st. He, he doesn't say it's usually around the 20th or so. Hmm. Nope. It's, it's you know, again, I'll read that um, the murderer's row for you here. We got uh, Johnny Drip Drip. Uh, we got Ricochet. Oh, Johnny Drip Dick. We do have Big E, who, you know, has right. been making some noise as of late. Uh, and then we have Perennial, like, let's put someone over on these guys, Owens or Zayn. Uh, you know... Well, wait, who who is confirmed? Who's in? Who is qualified for the money in the exactly bank? That's what I just said. Ricochet, okay. John Morrison. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I missed Matt Riddle. Or, sorry, Riddle. Ricochet, Morrison, Riddle, McIntyre, Big E, and Kevin Owens, or Sami Zayn. I think Big, Big, e, Big E is the only one that really feels viable to me. And that could be didn't, me being dumb, but... Didn't you now, say there was I, some sort of last last chance qualifier or something like that? Yeah, it happened on Raw. That, yeah, that was for the Raw, and that was um, Riddle, which was... He was wrestling for Orton, AJ Styles, and Drew McIntyre. So conceivably... No one else in the raw roster is making it. 
So, Poot, when you said the only feasible option that you see there is Big E, is that the only person you see feasible as winning or the only person other than Drew McIntyre that you see feasible as winning? Um, I, 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 see, I see it basically being um, like Big E to me feels like the only one that feels viable because... Drew McIntyre doesn't need like a tool like the money in the bank. I think Biggie having the money in the bank briefcase would be entertaining. I think he'd be able to carry it for as long as he absolutely needed to. I think that he deserves it. Um, and, you know, looking at the other guys in the match, and it's really not trying to beleaguer any of them because, I mean, I like all the guys that are in this match. But, like, John Morrison doesn't need that. Riddle no. needs to dial himself fucking in um, because he was so good on the indies and he was so good in NXT. And, and you know, it's probably not of his own volition, but it's just kind of like. So, the, speaking the, the, to that real quick, Poot, just, just, just volleying this back at you, though. Riddle's gotten a claim on what he's been doing with Raw on, on Raw lately, and word is that Vince is very, no pun intended, high on him right now because of what he's doing in the ring, backstage vignettes with Orton. Like Riddle's really there. There's nothing more for him to dial in, man. He's already at eleven, and I think he's going strong. All right, cool. The um, like, yeah. uh, ah, fuck me for watching the product and know what I'm talking about. My bad. No, like it is. No, Everybody. but my no, my point is, is that you you make a you make a fair point. Matt Riddle could be good to carry this belt, but like, or not the belt, the briefcase, but like Matt Riddle, like I just feel like they would really be missing the pitch if they if they if 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 they went with someone other than Drew McIntyre. I feel like they really would be missing the pitch if they didn't put it on Big E. Um, so, like, I... That's just and, me. I that's mean, just kinda me. Kind of like you said. Yeah. And kind of like you said, Poot. Like, there... <laughs> Morrison doesn't need it. There's no chance in hell that Ricochet gets it. I mean, Ricochet yeah. is pretty much, what have you done for me lately in WWE? And again, no fault to Ricochet. This all has to do with freaking WWE booking. But, like... <laughs> I don't understand why he's in... Well, I understand why he's in the match, because he's a spot monkey. He's going to be the Money in the Bank ladder match spot monkey. But he's not going to win. I, there's no chance in hell he's going to win that. What they're doing is they're putting together a great match, because Morrison yes. can go, as we've seen. Ricochet can go. If it's Owens, yes. we know that Owens can go. But at yes. the end of the day, this feels a lot like... Um, what was the year that Randy Orton won Money in the Bank? Did he win Money in the Bank? I don't even remember anymore. Um, like this, it, it honestly, it's it's a bunch of enhancement talent and Drew McIntyre, unless the last two TBAs are Brock Lesnar and Hulk Hogan. I don't like, and and this is this is their this is their foot back in the door with McIntyre. Because McIntyre can't have a WWE title match against Lashley, but there's no saying he can't cash in on Bobby Lashley. That's a different, you know, that's that's a horse of a different color. That's a loophole. So, I, you know, I, I think that this has been the plan all along, and they're probably going to have Drew use it at SummerSlam, and, you know, we'll be dead for another fucking year, which they like to oh do as well. Oh, my gosh. Yep. Ugh. Yep. So, so here's the here's the thing, and this is the last thing I'm going to say on Money in the Bank because I don't want to. A, I know we've been going long in the tooth, and B, I don't want to you know beleaguer Money in the Bank because I know we have picks coming up, so we might have a discussion about it further. But I'm I'm generally pissed and disappointed in the fact that they broke Biggie away uh, from the New Day. Jeez, oh man, I can't even freaking remember the name of the tag team or the stadium. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, I'm generally pissed that they broke him away from the New Day. Now, if they were going to break him away from the New Day and he was going to get pushed and he was going to go on to great things, okay, I'm still a little disappointed because I love the New Day and I thought they worked really well together. 
and I don't understand why he couldn't have gotten this push as part of the new day, whatever. But if he's not going to get that massive push, if he's just going to be a singles competitor and not really go anywhere, I feel like they're mis that's a grave misuse of him and that stable when that stable was so much money together. They were so entertaining. Everybody loved the new day. Why break Biggie away if he's not going to be in that title picture, if he's not going to be in that title hunt? And I don't think him being in the Money in the Bank ladder match is him being in that title hunt. I just don't. Because when you have other people in that match, like John Morrison and like Ricochet, when you know they're going to put on a great match, but they're not going to win, I don't see that as them elevating Big E. He could have been in Money in the Bank and still been part of the New Day. I, I'm, I'm disappointed in that, and I don't like, I don't like it. That's, that, it's just my dumbass opinion. I just don't like it. They could have been just putting, I mean, I kind of get it because like New Day, those kind of stables, and I think you guys would agree with me, those kind of stables can eventually either get tired or grating, right? They can. Well, yeah. Right. But New Day never did. Like no. they always did something different. They were always charming and endearing and funny and turned it on when they needed to turn it on. You know what I mean? Every single one of them. Um, yeah. And they were great in the ring together. So exactly. I know that we're talking about making our tortilla here soon, but I think that this fits the theme of where we're going. Recently, WWE uh, named their top 50 tag teams of all time. And New Day was at the top of number one. I love the New Day. I thought that they're entertaining as hell, and I think I still think they're entertaining as hell. I don't think there's a chance they should have sniffed the top ten. Wow, wow. that's a really that's a if you're including. So if you are including, and I, so I didn't see the list, but I, I don't know if they're including WCW tag teams and and, and ACW tag teams, but like Dudley's for me. Number one with the bullet should be the Dudley Boys. Like, until such a time that a team looks and is as good as the Dudley Boys are together, nothing should unseat them. I would have a very hard time wrestling Demolition out of the top five. I think that for their era, they were absolutely no. dominant. I think that the New Age Outlaws, again, for their era, deserve a yep. real, real big push in there. Uh, I think the Shield, if, if, if we're being real, when they came up, it, 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 they probably needed more time, honestly, for the Shield. But my point is that I, I could listen to New Day being maybe six or seven, but to be the number one tag team of all time does not sit well with me. Well, I, you know what? I think after hearing your argument, I, I can agree with you there. I, I mean, I'll, I definitely put New Day definitely in the top ten, but but I'll agree with you that there are definitely some other good contenders there. The ones that you just mentioned, I um, mentioned like the Outsiders. You know, they're oh, obviously they're they're a historic tag team. Harlem so, Heat. Harlem Heat. Oh my God, yeah, Harlem Heat. So yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. Like the Horsemen. Like I, you know. WWE tends to do this a lot where they kind of like gloss over the past and they're like, they're number one because they're new and shiny. They did this with uh, Stables a couple years ago um, where they had like Undisputed Era, like number three behind like DX and the NWO. And I was like, ah, I like the Undisputed Era and all, but I mean, ah, I don't know, man. Yeah, that's a fair point too. They just, they, I, I've never seen a company not rely on their history, but instead choose to look at where they're at now. Well, and, and I see, and I, 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 arguments can be made that relying too much on the history is a problem for sure. I was, I was just about to say that in one, on one circuit, on one hand, they try to forget about the past, but then they drudge out everybody from fucking all these legends and, you know, rely on fucking he who shall not be named before he sends me into a heart attack. Fucking yeah, thanks, dickhead. Um, oh, oh, sorry, oh. King Dickhead. King Dickhead. Oh, uh, <laughs> and, 
Mind your tone, knave. Bend the knee. I'll bend your dick <laughs> into Ransom's mouth. Oh. Anyways, oh, well, but my my but my point being, they, they you know on one hand, like you <laughs> said, let's forget about the past. Let's forget about all these awesome teams that came before. But at the same time, well, let's fucking let's trot out fucking Goldberg, you know, or whatever. And it's like. It's funny that they oh, do. Yeah. You can't have your Hulk cake Hogan and eat it too. Hulk yeah, exactly. Brother, it's, brother, brother. It's funny brother. that they do it the wrong way both ways. Exactly. Like, you're you're fucking it up both ways. Like you could, and in, in this sense, you could have your cake and eat it too. But WWE is, is, is instead saying, "Hey, let me poop in my hand and then I'll eat it." <laughs> oh God, well, Schneider. Exactly. Poot, Poot, Poot had something I know he was going to say, and I, I, I heard him kind of get cut off, and I'm sorry, Poot. Don't even remember what it was. Don't worry about it. Move on. All right. <laughs> well, I don't think there is any moving on. I think, I think this is it. I think we're moving out. We're chipping out. Moving on up. Yeah, we're, 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 not, we're not moving anywhere near the east side. To the east side. Moving on. Kind of going east-ish. All right, I'm going to make this close out then short and deadpan. sweet for you. What? Yeah, right. I, I, I just said deadpan. Tom's like, hey, I have this, uh, I'm excited about something, and everyone else is like crickets, you know? I'm excited for you, Tom, damn it. What are you excited Back for, you. Tom? You. Tom, what are you excited for? <laughs> to be fucking moving on up. Oh, yeah, you are. Congratulations. I'm, I am I'm moving. Piece of the pie. I, I'm moving to the east side of, you know, east of Pittsburgh, north and east-ish. So, you know. North side. Yes, you are. And congratulations. To- yes, yes, and proud we are of all of you. The um, I, you know, on no, I'm just I'm really I'm really excited to be closer to you guys. I can't wait to wait to host fucking uh a live podcast down in the uh down in the Tiger Bomb Tom jungle. It's uh being preparations are being made. I can't wait. I'm excited. Everybody's got a gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> wow! I, I, I have to mute up. You, you, you and Pooter killing me. I'm done. I'm out. Goodbye, to everybody. <laughs> All right. Well, we I am, guess I'm home, Poot. <laughs> and and yes, we look forward to that. I am going to keep this tight. Let's thank our sponsors here. I want to go ahead and thank Mr. Tiger. Sawn's uppercut. I'm done oh. with that because every time I try to, yeah, do you've it, said it you've always... been done with it about three times. That's no, no, fine. No, I really am because every time I try to do it, it, it comes out. like. It cuts or whatever, so let's just let's just sans uppercut it from. All right, that's fine. I'll do it. Let's thank our very own Tiger Uppercut Bomb Tom because it won't cut out on mine because this is the oh. the the origin recording here. It won't cut up out on me Ugh. because that's Discord's fault. By the way, Discord, get your shit together. I want to thank our very yeah, own right. Tiger Uppercut Bomb Tom and his page Casual Gaming Dad over on Facebook. That's Casual Gaming Dad. There, make sure you check out his awesome streams. He's entertaining as hell. And join us for Among Us on Tuesday nights. It's always a lot of fun. And now with less yimmer yammering, uh, yeah. and 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 less uh, less uh, kerfuffery and less things. Ear cancer. That, ear cancer. There we go. With a hundred percent less ear cancer we also want to tell you to join his uh his community over there that's casual gaming dad's corner again that's on facebook you can also check him out on youtube and twitch that's casual gaming dad and casual gaming dad 84 respectively all right we also want to thank frig off ransom and his channel frig off ransom so you can go check that out is it and you can go check you can go check out his hilarious videos and hear more glottal stops like that give us one there you go. Something along those lines. We also want to thank Mr. Sean Tischler and his work with IWC in uh, the Pennsylvania area. And Sean, we're excited to see more independent wrestling. And we're very excited that Beef is going to be representing the Pittsburgh Pad Driver podcast at the <laughs> AEW events that are going to be coming to <laughs> Pittsburgh uh, here in up, the beef. near near future. I'm sure he'll do a wonderful <sighs> job. And um, I'm sure he will have a blast. And I'm sorry I can't join you. It was either going to see those or going to see Sabaton. And I'm going to go see Sabaton. I love you, Beef. But Sabaton, time to go see some heavy metals. 
Um, and uh, we want to also tell you to make sure to like the Pittsburgh Pile Driver Podcast on Facebook. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. Again, that's Pittsburgh Pile Driver Podcast. You just search for it. You'll find it. And we want to give a shout out to Gold Gaming for allowing us to have the Pittsburgh Pile Driver Podcast t-shirt on Casual Gaming Dad Store. Again, that's Gould Gaming, G-O-U-L-D, Gaming. And you pick up some Casual Gaming Dad merchandise and also your very own P3 shirt. Make sure you get those votes in because... We want to see if you can topple any one of the four of us uh, and uh, make sure you bend the knee when you give in your picks because our Ooh. Mad King champion, yeah, he's, he undersells himself. He could hang on to that belt for a while. For myself, the Barbarian Poot the Bard, uh, Ransom the Madman, our very own freak off boy, <laughs> Mr. Tiger Uppercut Bomb Tom. And, of course, we would be remiss if we didn't mention our scholar of the wrestling world, Mr. Beef, the legend. Thank you for listening to the P3 Podcast. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. Stinger! Thanks for listening to the AEW Podcast, everybody. Have a good night. Damn it, JR.